If there's ever a time where we needed to pull together as believers of Christ and, and unite and try to strengthen and make the world a better place, it's now. Mm-hmm. And that, that sounds like he's yeah. preaching our message. <laughs> there's one body, one church, one spirit, one hope. The realities of the faith, the realities that unify us are already there. Christ prayed for unity. What should we all be praying for? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the one prayer request of Jesus. Think about it in the Bible, that we actually have a say in whether or not it comes to fruition or not. I think in what God has done in you guys in, uh, in this podcast and the, the multitude of folks that you're reaching, the diversity, whatever God intended when, he's, when you started this, he's able to bring it to completion. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Whole Church Podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Joshua Knoll, here with your other co-host, TJ Tiberius Juan Blackwell. Hello. And also with a special guest, uh, Paul Calcote, or um, should I say Pastor Paul Calcote? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I guess either one. But either he is one. The, he is a young adult pastor as well as the host of the Real People, Real Talk podcast. Today we're here mostly to talk about his podcast. We'll kind of go over some of his beliefs in his own church. Maybe I think we're going to go over his testimony. We have plenty of stuff to talk to him about. But before we do, we want to jump into just couple of uh, things, like preliminary things we like to do. Uh, one, we just like to review some of what our audience has been saying online. On Podchaser, my cousin, Leslie Kuntz, con- reviewed our podcast, considered joining her in the one person who has reviewed our podcast on Podchaser. Uh, Leslie said, super great, love it, Josh is the best. Unfortunately, she did not mention the inferiority of TJ, but uh, I'll let that slide for now. You guys, uh, please feel free to join her on Podchaser. Just review our show, rate us, helps us uh, helps us a lot. Um, we also, on our mundane Monday, did a poll to see if people prefer voicemail, email, physical mail, text, or some kind of other mail, and uh, found out that most people, in fact, prefer email on that list. Finally, we asked everyone the silly question of a couple weeks ago, what their favorite cartoon dog was. Diana and my wife, Tiffany, both said Goofy. Tiffany added that Jake also might be. So she's in between the two. And that's uh, Jake from Adventure Time. Fantastic character. And uh, yeah, so that brings us to our silly question of this week. This week, we're all going to answer. Me and TJ will go first. Uh, Paul, we'll, uh, we'll answer it first, give you some time to think about it. Our silly question for the week is going to be, what was your least favorite book that you had to read in school? And I feel like we all have one. We all have that one book we had to read in school that we're like, God, I wish I didn't have to read that. And uh, for me, if it's okay with TJ that I go first. Yeah, of course. Yeah. For me, it was Across Five Aprils. I could not stand that book. I do not remember why I hated it so much. I remember that I felt like it just went on and on and on. It was very repetitive and long, but I don't remember much of the content. I just remember really not enjoying Across Five Aprils. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, until I started this sentence just now, I okay. couldn't think of any book that I had to read <laughs> that I didn't at least, you know, in, you know, not hate. Like I, at the most I like tolerated it or at the least I tolerated it. But when I started speaking, I remembered that I had to read this book called Tangerine in middle school. And it was so bad. I scrubbed it from my memory entirely. (laughs) I don't remember how long it was. I don't remember the premise. I think a kid plays soccer. (laughs) It was awful. So like everything about it, you just forgot. I, I remember I hated reading it and I purged it from my mind as soon as possible. Well, all right. So. Then. Okay, so uh, Paul, did you have a least favorite book that you had to read in school? Um, I don't remember too many books in school because it wasn't until like midway through college that I kind of like fell in love with reading. But uh, okay, okay. So freshman year of college, they asked me to read Bear Wolf, and I'm not saying it's least favorite, but Bro. I didn't read it, so that's why I put it in least favorite category. Sorry, to my English teacher out there. So, wait, so you just you did so you didn't read it? Correct. Okay. Yeah. As long as you didn't read it, it like you know, because Beowulf is good. I like it Beowulf is, a lot. It is extremely hard to read though. But like maybe <laughs> once you're at that reading level, 
or surpassed it and you read it and it's like oh this is great especially uh jrr tolkien did his rendition of it like he kind of rewrote it and it was really well yeah I, I have a copy with like the old english and like the modern english translations on the same page so nice it, it's pretty easy to read like that but anyway yeah we wanted to get into the actual show so uh, we're no longer going to talk about beowulf <laughs> i probably could for a long time though yeah uh, this is so, a beowulf podcast <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so one thing that we believe is extremely important to church unity is to hear one another's story of how we came to Christ. Uh, would you mind telling us your testimony? Yes. And before I get into it, I just want to once again, just thank you, Joshua and TJ, for having me on the, her, the whole church podcast, man. This is my pleasure. So thank you. Yeah, oh, thank course. you. Yes. I came to know the Lord at a young age. My parents are pastors and just growing up, kind of grew up in the church, grew up in a Christian home. And uh, I remember at times, in all honesty, like my parents, they would say they wanted to get a divorce and they really thought about it. And one thing that they said to me when I got older is that, oh, well, no, not when I got older, but they said we wanted to choose God's will over our will. And I was like, I want to know God like that. I'm so committed in that way. And so um, accepted Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, made the decision to follow him, followed it up with believers baptism and gave my life to the Lord. But then again, uh, I do feel like I was saved in that moment, but it wasn't until college where I kind of really personalized my face and really, um, more so understood. And I had to realize I'm not going to get into heaven off the, the coattails of my parents, but I need to know the Lord for myself. And so kind of like a, a process, if you will. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people do that. You know, you, you grow up kind of Christian and then you're like wait a minute what's it really mean to be Christian and yeah kind of re, re hit it was it was it hits different in college right <laughs> yes good one so uh, what 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 denomination are you a part of now um a part of now I'm a part of the Southern Baptist Convention okay so hmm. you say hmm. now in a tone that suggests that you used to be in a different church Yes. A way to pick up on that clue that I left you. <laughs> um, yes. I come from a non-denominational background, my parents' church, but it flowed in a charismatic way. So even though it was non-denominational, it would be um, adjacent to Pentecostal or Church of God in Christ or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're both Church of God of Prophecy, so we're, oh, we're cool. familiar with the, yeah. the, that kind of. Yeah. So uh, what is, what's unique about the church you're at now? I would say church governance is it's not top down like your um the Catholic Church or Church of God in Christ where there's you know popes and bishops and things of that sort, but kind of each church governs itself and uh, they believe in the autonomy of the local church and um the priesthood of every believer and so and it's like all churches voluntarily join the domination and they stay in by adhering to what we call like the Baptist faith and message, like our core beliefs. And it's really like, like cooperating um, together. So it's very, very democratic, if you will. Yeah. So, so it's not like, you know, the Southern Baptist convention has to start your church to be Southern Baptist convention. Exactly. You can be gra yeah. grafted in and it's not like, like our president of the Southern Baptist convention, he couldn't come and like tell us what to do with our church. So, so to speak. Right. Nice. Cool. Almost like cool, a republic. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. I like it. Yeah. All right. So, you know, the other thing we like to do, and the main thing we like to do regarding theology is our speed round segment. We're just, I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. And the only rule there, well, there are two, but the only <laughs> rule for you is that uh, you have to answer it in a sentence. And if you can't answer the question in a sentence, you can just say pass and we'll skip it. Uh, maybe come back to it later if we have time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The rule for us is that we can't ask follow-up questions. Ooh, it's tough for both of us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's why TJ has to do it. I am <laughs> Yeah, he can't. <laughs> so, are you ready? Yes. All right. Number one, uh, how do you define church? Church is God's people past and present those that's in eternity now we're going too too long but yeah god's people it's not the all right. <laughs> all right uh do you believe in a continuation of the gifts of the spirit i do i do all right uh do you believe that speaking in tongues is the initial evidence of baptism of the holy spirit i'm still studying that hmm. good answer <laughs> uh, 
Do you believe sanctification is a one-time event or a continual process? Process. We're going close to the Lord every single day, or we should. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your view of the authority of Scripture and church tradition? High view of the authority of Scripture. Um, not as high of a view, church tradition. Uh, what are your views on tithing in the church today? Tithing, that's 10 percent. So I feel like tithing is the floor of our giving and not the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you define holiness? Holiness. Um, set apart, man. Pure. Right. How important is holiness to you? Very important because to be holy is to be obedient mm. uh, how many of the sacraments do you hold to if any um, my current church bap um, definitely baptism and the Lord's Supper mm -hmm. alright so that's it you did it oh okay congratulations that's, that's the first time yeah <laughs> that's the first time we've had someone not pass one in a long time mm. yeah yeah yeah, it's become more popular to pass. Yeah, no, I don't just them. just a cut above, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, I'll it's take it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. So we've mentioned it. You have your own podcast. It's real people, real talk. I listened to a couple episodes. Definitely recommend it for people. If you want to stop this episode here and go over there, I wouldn't blame you. I prefer you listen to the rest of the episode and then go check <laughs> out his show. But, you know, um, what, what led you to starting real people, real talk? Uh well first to your listener hey finish listening the whole church podcast you can listen to real people real talk another day but stay here all right um um uh, I'm sorry repeat your question again I got so I got distracted <laughs> with saying it <laughs> oh man how did you start your show um I started it so I'm a young adult pastor slash college pastor at the church that I I work at uh, pastor at or one of the pastors there and we was having Zoom Bible studies because of COVID and the pandemic and. Basically, a lot of the cameras were off and they wasn't as interactive or um, responsive as usual. So I'm, you know, praying to the Lord, what's another way I can minister to this age group without the burden of them have to turn on the camera, be presentable, answer my interactive questions, blah, blah, blah. And then the podcast was born. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Pretty simple. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Good idea. That, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we record without our cameras on. Uh, Josh, because his is poor quality, but my laptop is just so old. You know, it was bef <laughs> from before people ever thought we'd need a camera to do work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they just didn't put one in. But, you know. Uh, so how did you settle on the name Real People, Real Talk for your show? Oh, that was so tough. I dealt with paralysis of analysis where I was, you know, Googling, YouTube, and um, getting feedback from current college students and young adults, and then from other places I've ministered to of that age group. And I uh, thought about calling it Young and Saved because that's what I'm going for. Like, my target audience is um, the younger generation, um, um, 20s and 30s. But I didn't want a quote unquote, I personally didn't want a quote unquote churchy name because some people can get turned off from a churchy name. So I wanted right. something that was cool and hip. But once they get on there, it's not a, it's not a, you know, bait and switch. But once they get on there, I'm very open with my faith and, you know, there's scripture, there's prayer. We point them to Christ. And so it's like, I want to keep it real and I'm going to have real, real stories on there. And so real people, real talk is how that came about. Awesome. Okay. Solid. So yeah. what is one of the most real stories? And like I mentioned, I heard a couple of your episodes. What would you say is the most real story you've heard on your show? Ooh. Um, it's something I said earlier in my testimony, but when my parents was on one of the one of the two episodes that they've been on, they talked about how they wanted to get a divorce. And I like although I knew that, I just felt like for pastors to say that publicly, I just feel like I was kinda like proud of them like in that moment to be so real. Uh, and then there was also this other guy. It was um, a white pastor and he admitted to being a recovering racist, like right there on the podcast. Oh, and wow. <laughs> I think he did it in the social media and I brought it up on the podcast and then he kind of addressed it with the fact that he didn't like shy away from it. I was like, Oh wow. So we really do get real on here, man, man, that's brave. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was. Right. And, and in all honesty, y'all like I had to check my heart because at first, I was offended because he was racist, but then 
the Lord convicted my heart. Like this man is confessing sin and repenting. Like, who are you, Paul? So it was a very like spiritual moment. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, I get that. Yeah. So uh, recently you interviewed D'Angelo Collier about family curses. Uh, would you mind describing to our audience what a family curse is? A family curse. Like, I feel like I don't I don't think there's like maybe I didn't Google anything, but like scientific evidence. But it's kind of like a pattern that you see in families. Like, you know, somebody say, well, well, I give you an example. My dad, you know, divorces his, his first wife, his first wife, my brother. Um, it's going through a divorce now and then there's divorce throughout my family. So I feel like that's a family curse. So like I'm hypersensitive mm -hmm. in my, in my marriage is like doing the, you know, the best that I can. So I think a family curse is one of those things that just kind of goes on in your family. Some, it could be divorce. It could be drug abuse. Um, it could be a variety of different things. Right. Yeah. No, that, uh, that definitely is at least somewhat scientifically sound because, you know, you can hear it, you know, certain psychological, what what is that word? Psychological, Psycho sort of. But you can inherit things through your family line. That you know, mental traits, physical traits, it it all happens. And then you know, it they bring you up the way they were brought up. You know, that kind of repeats some of those circumstances that lead to your personality and your psychology. So exactly, because yeah. we talked on there about this whole thing of like nature versus nurture is it something mm -hmm. that we're just born with or is something we've just been conditioning and just through the power of the holy spirit and reading god's word and seeking after him we can break those generational curses and family curses yeah amen yeah it kind of brings up the whole question of you know the nature versus nurture and we're all born evil according to the bible mm -hmm. but also there's family curses and also you know some families i guess i wouldn't say predispositions but you know what i mean towards bible and Christianity, yeah, stuff. you know, uh, the Bible talks about, uh, you know, the, yeah. you raise your up your children right, they will not falter. And I'm like, okay, so there's kind of something to both sides biblically, yeah, yeah, and scientifically. So I mean, it's interesting. Um, so what do you, what do you think? Is there a way that of breaking family curses in such a way that would like try and figure out how to word this question? Is there any way you think? that if we all work on our own family curses and we break those, that that would help church unity in some way? Um, I guess it depends on which curse it is. Like when I, maybe one could be racism. And if that runs in a person's family and they break that family curse, <laughs> then by all means, they would um, take a step in the right direction towards unity. Because I mean, we have so much more, and come and through Jesus, as opposed to, you know, the differences that we sometimes um, care too much about, whether we're black or white or um, Asian or Hispanic, et cetera. So I do believe that. I do believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, you can't out. have unity with people when you have hate in your heart. Amen. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so that one for sure. <laughs> I mean, we didn't script this question, but how, how do people. You know, let's say they kind of recognize that. You know, you talked about divorce being in your family or racism or if someone's recognizing that when they hear this, saying, Hey, this is in my family, what can they do to break that curse? Man, it is scientific. I think I learned this in my sociology class back in college that the first step or psychology, one of those ology classes, freshman year. <laughs> but um the first step towards anything is um getting out of denial, like don't deny the problem. So admit and recognize that there's a problem to begin with. So uh, with me being a, a Baptist preacher, sometimes we like alliteration. So number one, recognize it. Number two, repent of it. And then like once you kind of recognize and repent of it, just, you know, um, be the person that can like break the chain and be the change. So, um, right. I can't remember which king it was, but like reading the book of Kings, it's kind of sad. Like almost every king was like, and this person did evil in the sight of God and this person did evil. And then along comes Josiah. It kind of like breaks that curse, um, so to speak. Josiah. Yeah. All right. Hey guys, we just wanted to take a quick break to tell you a few ways that you can support the whole church podcast, your favorite church unity podcast. 
Yes, you can sign up for our newsletter at our website or by emailing us at thewholechurch at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You could share this episode on your own social media. You could donate to us on Cash App with the tag that's in the show notes. You could follow us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the whole church podcast. You can subscribe to this show wherever great podcasts are found, or you could rate us on Apple Podcasts or Podchasers. Especially that last one. It's a really great way for us to get recognition, not only from the community, but from people looking to find new good podcasts. Yeah. So let's get back to the show then. Yeah. And for those who aren't aren't aware of Josiah's story, what's really cool about that, just because you brought it up, uh, Josiah not only broke his own family curse, but also if you pay attention to the biblical narrative, like the overall narrative of the Old Testament, he brought back the Bible. So Mm. then when you see Nehemiah and Ezra and all these people coming up out of the exile who knew the Bible, that's because of Josiah, because he broke the cycle. He was able to create a new one. So yeah, just cool stuff. There, there really is. And that's like a, a word and a message like for the listener, like whatever has run through your family, like it can stop with you and with you and the power um, of the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of you. You know, once you know the name of Jesus, um, you can break that and you can like be the change and leave a legacy in, in your family. And I remember saying this meme. It was like um, and it said it ran into my family until it ran into me. So you don't have to, you know. Yeah keep this cycle going break it well yeah. yeah i mean just just like there's generational curses there's also generates generational blessings mm. so you you start the change for the next generations and you pray for not just your Amen. kids but the generations after that i mean right pow- powerful stuff and TJ uh, needs to make me move on mm-hmm. so <laughs> i mean i really don't want to though because like that recognize and repent of it so the hardest part sometimes is recognizing it yeah acknowledging that it's a problem you know that level of introspection isn't something that everyone is just naturally gifted with it's true so yeah you know it's really important to analyze yourself and be like well why why am i doing these things yeah so uh, and then maybe therapy but you know oh yeah that's big too so so i'll ask both of you and since tj brought it up i'll let him answer first uh (laughs) how how does someone recognize How, how how do they go hey this is a curse that's going on in my family I then think how I'm going to replace that with this blessing. Like, how do they recognize it in the first place? Well, you know, in my opinion, you have to acknowledge it exists. You have to realize what it is that you have to repent from. It's not easy to do. And it's not like there's not just one thing that everyone can do to find out. It it comes from recognizing those patterns in your family's lives, acknowledging that those patterns exist in your own life. And taking steps to interrupt the pattern. Yeah. At least that's what I think. Yeah. You know, I don't know. All right. So, <laughs> Pastor Paul, what do, what do you think? Is there is there like a key to recognizing, hey, this is a generational problem that we're having in my family? I don't know, man. Because I can't like point to a year where I say, yeah, I sat down and I thought about this. And I realized that this was a generational curse. But it was more just as I grew up and just was observant of my family. Um, and they would just got to have the humility and the transparency to even say that. Cause I almost cringe saying it, but I'm like, somebody just can get, um, you know, set free and delivered. Like when we share our scars and then point them back to the Lord. And so I'm not sure that key is, but just gotta be open and observant. So you can recognize and address it. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm going to add to that. You, you guys say be open and observant. I want to add, um, David prayed to God to search his own heart. Mm. And, you know, I, I think it's always important that you pray that God searches you, searches your family, and that um, if God wants you to know about it, he'll let you know, you know? Amen. Right. So uh, before we start to wrap up, uh, could you share with us what you think the most impactful moment you've had on your show so far has been? Ooh, um, most impactful moment. I've done, like, 50 something episodes so like to pick <laughs> one um yeah, it would have to be don't ask that. i know right <laughs> so it would have to be in response to um uh, one of the episodes that i did very recently it's called shoot your shot 
where I talk about I redeem that term and it's not about axing the girl out. No, I'm talking about do that thing that God has been stirring in your heart to do. And so that's like I did a solo episode on that. But all throughout last year, every now and then I would just sprinkle that in there. And so I've got like the most response from that. Like one girl um, I went to school where she texted me and said, man, shoot your shot was just what I needed to hear. And like two weeks later, well, two weeks from when she texted me, I'm not saying like she started this once she heard the podcast, but she just yeah. started her business <laughs> of being a, a wedding planner. And then my cousin from that same episode, he texted me and said, man, when you say shoot your shot and just do it now and don't be afraid, I needed to hear that in my bones and just kind of get, get active. And so that's one of the most impactful moments. And a close, I guess, 1A and 1B, it was this guy <laughs> that uh, messaged me on Instagram, this guy from Germany, like one of my Instagram followers. And he was like, that specific sermon that you preach, and this was over the summer, that specific sermon that you preach, I think the title was, um, that's a purpose for your pain. Because from time to time, I do sermons and conversations on the podcast. He was like, that was just what it, I needed to hear. I'm um, in the moment. And so those would be the most two impactful things that I know on this side of eternity. Awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So everybody make sure you go over there and uh, check out and look for those moments. Um, so one thing we like to ask every guest that comes on the show, we like to ask them if there was just a single tangible action that you could have every single person listening to every single person listening to this show right now. Once it's over, they're going to stop and they're going to go do this one thing you said. And that one thing would help maintain church unity. What would that one thing be? Ooh, bringing it practical. Um, I would definitely say to, I know it's going to look different because we're in a pandemic, but to have a conversation with another Christian that's either of a different race, a different political persuasion, or even from an entirely different denomination. And when you have that conversation, listen well and focus on more of what you guys have in common. Now, I'm not saying that if this person is Republican, you got to become a Republican. I'm not saying this person is a church <laughs> of God in Christ. You got to become that. But what I am saying is we should focus on unity and what we have in common, because not to get preaching here, but the Bible says that people are going to know that we are his disciples, not by the way we vote. Not by speaking in tongues, not by what church we go to, but they're going to know that we're his disciples by the way we love one another. And unity is part of love. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm, a- I'm starting to notice a pattern <laughs> in uh, in this question, because a lot of times we've gotten that answer. Mm. Talk to people. Talk to different people. Yeah. And, you know, make, I think make a friend. people need to start doing it. Yeah. yeah. It's about yeah, time. Enough guests say it. Maybe uh, everyone will just do it. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? So, uh, what what do you think we would see happen? What ramifications would it have if everyone started doing that? Man, I think it'd be more of an emphasis from a phil- philosophical standpoint, more of an emphasis on what we have in common. I feel like there is so much unity in Christ, and I get it. A lot of different denominations we have a different interpretation of various scriptures. I, I get that, but I feel like we shouldn't allow those things to divide us, but to walk in walk in unity. And so, because I feel like I didn't coin this term, I forgot who did, but um, a divided nation needs a united church. So whatever we can do to promote unity, I think that's going to really be a witness um, to those that are not believers, because why would somebody want to come to church, but they, (laughs) but they see us always fighting with each other. So I guess another way to ask the question, one of the ramifications would be more people come to know the Lord. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the best way to be salt and light in the world is to just answer Jesus's prayer that we all be one. Hey, Amen. Yeah. And I mean, uh, and just to add to what you were saying, man, I mean, cause you mentioned unity in a divided world. And the more I think about it, you know, the more divided our country is, the more appealing a United church would look. Hey, Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. I, I really like that answer. Yeah. Not, not to profit off of, you know, the division of the country, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, if it, if it fits, uh, so the last thing we like to do uh, before we get into the outro stuff is our God moment segment. It's just, you know, a, a part of your life from, you know, recently or the future, if you are so blessed, uh, <laughs> where God challenged us or blessed us or gave us a moment to worship just, you know, anywhere in your life where you've seen God's presence. And I always like to make Josh go first. 
I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm actually so excited. Usually I'm just kind of like, oh, TJ, why you always have to make me go first? But I'm so excited today, guys. I've been waiting all week, literally all week since Monday. I have been waiting to give my God moment. And since way longer than that, for years, back when, so those of you who are in Charlotte now don't know this, but 91.9 in Charlotte used to be New Life Radio or something like that. It's now another K-Love's channel. But back when Mm. 91.9 was New Life Radio, for a long time, you know, they do that thing on the radio and they talk about how, yeah, hey, this week, uh, buy the person behind you and the drivers, whatever, buy their meal. And I've, I've always wanted it to happen to me. (laughs) <laughs> I've done it before where I bought the person behind me's meal back when I had more money than I do now, but it's not happened to me until this Monday and it happened and I was so excited and I was like, that's my God moment. And yeah, so s- someone bought my meal at McDonald's <laughs> and I'm very happy and I'm very blessed. Yeah, I'm that's and I'm pretty in. cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't think I've ever had that happen to me. I don't Maybe think start I start to Lancaster McDonald's more. I, I, I'm i almost positive I go to that McDonald's more than you. <laughs> you absolutely do. But uh, my God moment segment, we'll let you go last, Paul, give you the most time, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so my family, most of them anyway, uh, you know, my sister, mom, brother-in-law, their kids, uh, they are all currently in Florida. Some, you know, someplace, Florida. You know, only like four of the cities there have names, I think. It's whatever. Uh, (laughs) They are going, they went to Florida to watch my little sister's volleyball tournament. And, you know, because it's going to be her last season playing volleyball in college. And they wanted to watch her. So they aren't letting fans in here at her school. But they are in Florida. So everyone's like, okay, yeah. We're going to drive, we're going to drive six hours to watch her play volleyball. (laughs) And, you know, it's just awesome that they were blessed with that opportunity. And I was blessed with the opportunity to watch my sister's dogs. Because dogs are good. I like, you know, I like dogs. It's like, you know, amen. Yeah. Or one of, one of her last volleyball games, maybe ever. Mm. Like, you know, find a way to watch it. So that's awesome. Yeah, pretty pretty thankful for that. So, Pastor Cal Coat, Mr. Paul, do you have a God moment segment for us? Yes. Um, this week, just for various things, it was like a um so so it's kind of two part personal and um ministerial. Ministerial it was like a kind of discouraging week, uh, just for various reasons. And then the Lord is kind of reminding me that he was sovereign, he was in control. And that I just need to be faithful because like the other night that we had Bible study, it was like our first time like having over 35 young adults to come on a Thursday night Bible study. And in like a while since the pandemic, because we've been, you know, since the pandemic, it's like 20, 25. And so seeing a lot of new face and the old face was just very encouraging. And then also uh, I like to keep it real. There was this, this <laughs> one person I had lunch with and I wasn't even going to bring up my podcast, but he brought it up. And he was like, how's your podcast doing? And we started talking about it, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, yeah, I'm not attracted to your podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I said, thanks, Captain Obvious. But then I stopped myself because I know I was getting sarcastic. And with that, it was just like, I already know in my mind, I was like, I already know where you're saying. There's literally no edification or constructive criticism about this coming. But anyway, so that's the bad part. God has kind of redeemed that in that before the day was over, just so much words of affirmation affirmation and encouragement um came in like one person sent like a a facebook video and just like man thank you for like the last episode then my instagram inbox uh or dm or whatever you call it on instagram somebody had (laughs) something else nice to say that i just had i checked my reviews and it just so happened that i had some new ones that day so it was like Okay, this was discouraging, but God was like, let me shower you with all this encouragement and remind you that you're on the right path. So God is just, he just showed us up so faithful and sovereign that he even cared about my hurt feelings. Just going to be honest, he cared about that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Kind of makes me wish people would start downplaying our podcast. Maybe we'd get, a, you know, <laughs> some words of affirmation. But. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, though, uh, and just all honesty, uh, you guys should 
go to Podchaser, leave our show a review, leave Paul's show a review. It does make us feel better. Yeah. It's just true. nice to see people letting you know, hey, you're doing good. But, uh, uh, uh <laughs> anyway, so, uh, pa- Pastor Paul, where, where all can people find your show, your church, everything you do? Yeah, my podcast, Real People, Real Talk, you can listen to it wherever you're listening now. You can listen to Real People, Real Talk. So <laughs> you'll see me in a red jacket that say Real People, Real Talk. So um, check it out because we believe in all things um, health. So when I say health, I mean spiritually. I want people to know Jesus first. But then I want people to 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 thrive um, physically, um, mentally, emotionally, financially, et cetera. And then where I serve young adults and college students is right here in Champ- at Champion Forest Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. So if you're listening and you're in the Houston area and you need a church home, hey, I would love to to introduce you to our church and um, guide you around. Yeah. Is Houston one of the areas in Texas that has really good street tacos? Yes, it Man, is. That sounds great. <laughs> sounds like TJ is. might come visit. <laughs> I know, right? For the tacos. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, so some future guests for the podcast, we've got Reverend Keno Kennedy and Sister Sylvia Staten. It will be their, I believe, third. It might third be both of their third, third and fourth, or third fourth and fourth and episode third. with us. Uh, Pastor J.R. Martin, uh, great guy, great dude. Uh, Pastor Will Rose of the Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. And, uh, of course, at the end of this season, we will have Francis Chan, Who probably. Nice... Absolutely no idea about it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> once yeah. once he's aware yeah. that when he becomes he's aware, been invited. He'll be on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking forward to that. We can end season <laughs> one after he agrees. Yeah, and once he tells us what season two will eventually be about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, thank you, Paul, for your time. We always have one more segment when we're done, uh, but you've got to you got to subscribe to the Patreon to get it. So <laughs> head over there, throw us a couple dollars. Maybe you'll like what you hear. Uh, Maybe. But yeah, thank you today for your time. Uh, come back next week for another great episode, and uh, be safe. Have a good one. Talk to some people. Yeah. All right.